passport. Check. Crumpled boarding pass. Sorted. Snuggly travel pillow. Oh yes. <laughs> knowledge. What? Cultural knowledge. Well, I've watched The Last Samurai, haven't I? And got this, uh, this guidebook, this Japan travel book. Oh, you mean the travel guide you'll never read? How dare you? I'm going to read it on the plane. Absolute lies. Save yourself the hassle, guys. In this video, I sat down with my good friend Pete, a British radio DJ who visits Japan once or twice a year, and we discussed 12 things we wish we'd known before coming to Japan. Hopefully, at least one or two of those points will save you from some potential embarrassment or save you some time. So let's jump in. Wow, he's actually reading it. Bloody hell. How, how are you? Are you all right? Well, it's not been a it's not been a good morning. Oh, let me read out a comment. Oh, oh dear. Read out a comment I received oh, oh. from Quib. Oh. One hour ago. Yeah. It says, is it me or did Chris become fat again? Wait, no, it doesn't. It says, is it me or did Chris became fat again? So you can't even write it properly. So not only is it an insult, but it's grammatically it's in, incorrect. It's, it's the worst kind English. of insult there is. <laughs> anyway, today we've come before you, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about 12 things we wish we knew about Japan before going. I'd like to think we've kind of ordered these in almost chronological order of mm. your trip if you're going to Japan. The yeah. first one, my first one, I've got six, Pete's got six. My first one is try and avoid flying into Narita Airport. Mm. There's two airports that service Tokyo, Tokyo uh, Haneda and Tokyo Narita. Actually, Haneda's really close, and that's the one I recommend. It's a brilliant airport. 20 minute taxi, 20 minute ride taxi into, into town. Oh, a monorail as well. Mm. Go straight there into Tokyo. 20 minutes, mm. beautiful, love it. And then there's Narita, which takes about three days trek to get to and from. I hate it. It's an hour and a quarter from Shinjuku, I want to say. The main reason I don't like Narita is just the distance, mm. you know. But Especially if you're flying into Japan, odds are you're going to be tired, mm. jet lagged, pretty grumpy. Mm. I, <laughs> I, you know, I can't stand it. I remember just arriving, just I want to sleep somewhere, I want to die. But no, but you you've got can, two hours fumbling through Tokyo. But you can rely on the trains in Japan, so there's that. So it's not like the Heathrow Express or the Gatwick Express or the Luton Shuttle. Oh, do you speak ill of the Heathrow Express? I do like the Heathrow Express. Uh, what's your first thing, OP? Toilets, guys. Toilets. First things first. I was going to chime in with the um, airport thing. Uh, Kokonai is quite a good word to use. Um, uh, you do know the most if you need to weird, find, if you, <laughs> random vocabulary. Yeah, because you learn some. You learn. That's how I used uh, okisugiru. Too you, much. Too these many. These are words that you really don't need to use. Yeah, I know, but it's useful. Kokonai. If you're trying to find the domestic terminal at an airport, sometimes you can't find the domestic terminal sign. So you sort of ask, where's the Kokonai Tamanaru? So this time round... Toire is a really good word to know. Right. Even though you say people don't use the word toilet, I want people oh, to... Oh, no, we do. To, they to, do, they do. do they? Okay, toilet. I, I like to be more elegant. I use oterai. Oterai. Like bathroom. Oterai. And o is, is o the honorific? Kind of the, yeah, the fancy? Yeah, because terai just... Oterai. Terai. Toilet. Now. I just... I just I, even now. in English, in English, I don't know. Like, where's the toilet? Yeah. Like, where's the bathroom? Yeah. Where's the rest exactly. of the facilities? Exactly. They're good words to learn, but also um, the, the kanji on the doors. Don't but those do are the two kanji yes. characters you need to know, because if you go into a toilet in a restaurant, or bar often mm. they are just in Japanese characters you if you do. don't know the character for male and female you're fucked I've at least walked in the female toilets by accident oh I did that in, I did that in, in a years. hub about three months ago and a woman came in I was like oh chikaimas mistake <laughs> oh chikaimas kokunai kokunai desu hentai and then die and did the hands. I oh dear. Do yeah, learn those characters yeah. and things won't go wrong. Um, and you won't go to prison for going in the wrong toilet. <laughs> the third point, what you find is most Japanese people do actually know English words. Yes. The bit where Japanese people go wrong is grammar. Yeah. And that's they what they get are, stressed out about, They isn't get it? stressed about grammar, mm. they panic. You'll, you'll find if you can just say an individual word, yeah. you'll be fine. Mm. So you didn't need to know the word kokunai means domestic. You can right. just say, oh, domestic. And they'll probably yeah. go, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. If you go, I want to go to the domestic flight, they'll be like, whoa, oh my god, oh. But also don't just be afraid. Just say individual words. Don't be afraid to put a really heavy Japanese accent on as well. It may seem a little racist and it may seem a little like Englishman abroad going, Dos cerveza por favor. <laughs> I'd love to make that into a video, just you walking around <laughs> Japan trying to sound Japanese by Saka. putting an accent on. Um, Shigotowa. Radio no DJ. Close. No. Oh. Radio. Radio. I said radio, didn't I? You said radio. No, I said radio. All right. Radio no DJ. Because Japanese students learn thousands of words, thousands of vocabulary, they're pretty good at memorising vocabulary. When I used mm. to work as a teacher, you would find they would nail like memorisation tests for vocabulary. Yeah. The bit where it all went to shit was grammar and so if you are in a sticky situation and the language barrier is in the way, just try and say the individual word. Yeah. Uh, try and say the, the same with taxis, you know, if you get in a taxi, oh, Shinjuku. Don't go, 
Hi there, I want to go to Shinjuku. Yeah. They're, f- they're not going to understand what you're saying. If you just go, ah, oh, Shinjuku, yeah. please. And, Fine, and, no and most And most taxis, I just go, uh, I just pick a tube station close to it, and they just yeah. say, and then uh, Shibuya Eki. Absolutely. But if you're not getting a taxi, there is an alternative, and I believe that's your next point, Pete. In Tokyo and Osaka and the big cities, the public transport is second to none, and it's very easy to use. Just remember that some of the train carriages, some of the metro uh, carriages are women only. I wish I'd known this because I uh, more than once I've got on a carriage and mm. it's been a woman only carriage. I didn't see that. I didn't read. I'm not very good at looking around at my surroundings. I just do things. Mm. So I got on the train and everyone was looking at me, which is fairly actually happens quite often in Japan. <laughs> you're a foreigner, but everyone was looking at me especially angry. Right. And I realised everyone that was looking at me was a woman. Ah. Uh, and basically, I'd got on the woman only women only carriage. <laughs> So just maybe like a rucksack surrounded by 40 women. Before you get on a train, look at the ground. It kind of tells you if it's yep. a woman-only carriage or not, or on the side of the train. Mm. And that will save you looking like a sleazy foreigner. Yeah, Fundamentally, a sad indictment Surround of Japanese men. Clear. Well, I mean, the reason it happened is because there's a lot of um, a lot of sexual harassment goes on. Chikan. Chikan. Yep, chikan. You can see how it happens. If you go on a train in Tokyo in rush hour, it's horrific. There's mm. certain times a day they have to force people on with a yep. stick because the train carriages are so mm. rammed full of people. I mean, you can see why it happens, as in uh, you can see why people think they can get away with it. Well, yeah, because you're, you're like yeah. that and your arms are like that. And you can't escape. Like, and you can't no move. Yeah. You can't, but someone with a sneaky hand can just come up touch you mm. from the other side of the carriage and you won't know where their arm's coming from or who did it uh, just because Tickle. you're surrounded by about 50 people Mr Tickle Mr Tickle from uh, the Mr Men in books. 2019 his little his little caper his little hustle <laughs> Tickle's on a bit of a dark edge I would say I don't think you get away with that kind of behaviour defamation but, uh, against Mr Tickle he's just he's got long arms for a reason <laughs> and uh, I'm not having it but uh, to pay for your train ticket what do you need Chris? lots of Money. cash dirty cash Japan is a cash based society mm. Do bring lots of cash. Most people in Japan do carry about $500 worth of cash on them. If I go like this, can you make money um, rain down on my camera? When it comes to editing this video, I'll decide whether or not that's that <laughs> super warranted <laughs> a, an overlay of cash raining down upon you. Ah, I'm covered in yen. <laughs> Many other times that I've arrived somewhere and tried to pay with a card and not been able to. And yep. you should always have at least $200 on you at any time. Mm. If you run out of cash, um, go to a convenience store. Don't go to a bank. Don't go looking for banks. Lots of banks in Japan don't take like Mastercard or Visa, whatever. Right. Just go to like a 7-Eleven, yeah. and those ATMs always do work. No, okay, okay. well, there was a problem when the tsunami hit. Mm. A lot of cash got swept away with the houses, right? Because entire houses, entire mm. towns got swashed away by the tsunami in right. 2011. And a lot of cash went with it because a lot of people right. keep their cash in their house under yes. their bed. And it kind of shows you the vulnerability of having cash mm. to some extent. Um, but yeah, I just can't believe people carry $500 around with them. Oh, yeah, Pickpockets yeah. pick dream. But luckily, yeah. Japan doesn't really have any pickpockets. I very rarely hear about it. So Not really, no. You can be safe. The first day in Japan mm. ever, yeah. I had ramen with my friend, mm. uh, Dan. He showed me around. Right. And yeah, everyone was slurping noodles. Just get on there. Big old slurp. It's it right. works because it, 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 it cools down it does, the noodles. It does, but yeah, you've got to go <laughs> like that. But uh, mm. that's what it's like if you go to a ramen shop anywhere in yeah. Japan. It's okay to slurp. If you don't slurp, you find it's actually a little bit tricky to eat Usually ramen noodles. Usually you, you find yourself kind of just kind of scooping them in. And I'm terrible with chopsticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get them really like, right. like, like, in front of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It's worse, if anything. And let's not um, forget that uh, once you finish your noodles, tipping. In Japan, tipping hasn't been invented. It's brilliant. Mm. It means you can actually go out for a reasonably priced meal. If you do do it, it's just a little bit awkward because mm. people will be like, why are you tipping me? What's going on? It just kind of makes them feel uncomfortable because it feels like you're judging their service quality. In Japan, right. people have to give their 110% every day at work, no matter what they're doing. Maybe they're the train driver, maybe they work at a restaurant, maybe they're flying a plane. Mm. Um, I don't know why those are the three professions <laughs> that came to mind. People give it their all every day, mm. and so they don't need to feel like they're being judged by having a tip. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's because Japan's service quality is good because people are less human, more like robots. Right, okay. Right. <laughs> I thought that was going to be ultimately very complimentary, but it didn't turn out that way in the slightest. <laughs> no, like, people give a consistently great service quality, but yeah. you can't really have small talk very often. Small yeah. talk, is, it just doesn't happen that much, yeah. in service quality there. Um, people just deliver a good service quality and then they go on with it. Mm. It's quite robotic, but it's efficient, and yeah, there's no need to tip. Lovely. Save your pennies. Save them spend pennies. It on something else. Yeah. Like footwear, which is our next point. <laughs> yeah, obviously, when you go for a bit of food, uh, occasionally a little drinky drink, you frequently find yourself in a situation where you have to take your shoes off. So if you've got those weird strappy boys, uh, big booties uh, that go up to your knee, you're going to have trouble getting them off, quite frankly. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is another thing I wish I'd known before going to Japan because mm. I had some nice Timberland boots. Right. Trying to impress people, so <laughs> splash big. 
think they were like 60 pounds. Wow. Whoa. Big money. Um, on some lovely boots. And then every time I went out for a meal or went into like a public office mm. or did anything, I had to take my boots off. And it took about 45 <laughs> minutes to do that. Whilst everyone's going and having fun, yeah. I'm still there by the doorway. Get my fucking boots on. <laughs> so don't wear big silly boots. No. Just have some nice trainers. Use Velcro. Really? No, don't use Velcro. Don't use Velcro. Don't use, just paint the feet, just remember, paint the shoes. I remember the days when I was seven and Velcro was good. The only time that... I used Velcro recently was doing a blood pressure test. Oh, yes. Yeah. High how blood pressure. Your, how high is blood your blood pressure? pressure? you got high so blood pressure. I'm fat, aren't I? Oh, I'm fat, Pete, so I've got high blood pressure. Me. Anyway, if you wear boots in Japan, have to take them off every day four or five times, you'll have high blood pressure too. So it's <laughs> a nice, easy to slip on trainers. Yeah. Next thing, though, Uber is a thing. It's, lots of people talk to me about going into Japan, going to Tokyo and using Uber. Uber hasn't really been invented in Japan yet. It's there, but it's only for really expensive Uber, um, yeah, they call it Uber Black yeah. service, right? But there are a lot more taxis in Japan than any other place I've ever been in the world. Like, yeah. if you go to any station, uh, you know, Sendai Station had at least 100 taxis out the front of it any hugely. time of day. Yeah. Um, hugely. Hugely. What about? hugely. 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 Don't go to Japan expecting to have Uber. Go to Japan expecting to spend lots and lots of money on taxis. <laughs> taxis with great service. And they wear taxis. gloves. They wear gloves. They wear gloves. They've got doilies. The doors, uh, the open, doors themselves. open themselves. Make sure you remember that because uh, that can cause all sorts of problems. Yeah. I don't know why that is. I think it's because you don't have to touch the door of the taxi, which is inherently dirty because you're driving around town all day. Yeah. I mean, we talk about Uber not being a thing. Actually, um, finding a way of actually accessing the Uber app is actually sometimes quite difficult. Uh, Wi-Fi... Public Wi-Fi is just not a thing. And this is point number 10. Public mm. Wi-Fi is rare. Japan does have very good high-speed internet, mm. but going around town, it's just not there. No. And it's, it really is quite annoying. <laughs> if you need the Wi-Fi quickly, yeah. just go to Starbucks. Just stand outside. And <laughs> leech off it. <laughs> Stealing public Wi-Fi. Come on. Don't do that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's These big a... corporations don't pay any tax, so I'm going to steal their Wi-Fi, uh, quite point. frankly. Fair point. A lot of people, like Pete, do grab a Wi-Fi dongle. Get Wi-Fi dongle, though. Increasingly, I am just getting a uh, making sure I've got an unlocked phone. and because Or, a, or a, a map of Starbucks, bro. Or a map of Starbucks. Where you stand out the front <laughs> of and steal public Wi-Fi. <laughs> smoking indoors. If you don't like smoking, then mm. you're in for a nasty shock because most places do allow smoking indoors still. I'm talking bars and restaurants yeah um, they are trying to phase it out especially before the olympics most places do have segregation mm. smoking non-smoking and actually the first thing you'll be asked when you go in is uh do you want smoking or non-smoking right so okay you can... kien kien it's quite difficult to say it's k-i-n-e-n kien e-i-n abstaining kien. from smoking no kien. smoking kien. kitsuen is smoking kien no smoking how, ah, you, gonna, how are you gonna remember that what mnemonic what name are you gonna use kien. Uh, Keenan, Keenan and Kel. Kel. Keenan so remember, smoking. Keenan and Kel, Keenan doesn't men. like smoking. Yeah, okay. And they will say Keenan or Kitsuen when you walk in. You just right. say, oh, yeah, Keenan. Uh, Unless you like smoking, Kitsuen it is. Get involved. Um, and the last point, and this is completely random, you can buy almost <laughs> anything at a 100 yen store. Find a 100 yen store. You can buy. You can buy nearly everything we've mentioned on this list in this video. Oh, massively. At some point. Or other. Yeah, 100 yen stores, um, which equates to about a dollar, I believe. Yeah. The best one is Daiso. It's the best known one. Daiso, Lawson's right. 100 uh, is another one. Oh, they've got their own up there. But right? literally anything you want, 100 yen store. Could be mm. a notebook, could be a sense of self-worth. You could buy it there at a reasonable price, 100 yen. Amazing. I used to go into Daiso, the 100 yen store, mm. just for finding weird English. Right, okay. Because yeah, 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 they, yeah. they have notebooks covered in weird English Japanese. And they don't necessarily need to bother with marketing. No, they don't bother having it proofread. No. That costs money. Why bother? <laughs> it just it gives their brand a sense of esteem by putting English on it. Right, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then people like me come along and exploit it for videos and laughter. Yep, the um, circle of life, as the Lion King once said. <laughs> Circle of <laughs> but yeah, do go in. And those are our things. Those are our 12 things yeah. we wish we'd known before coming to Japan. Hopefully at least one of them will save you an awkward situation or lead to some fun excitement, especially can, the 100 can, yen store. Can I get some more money raining down on me? Yeah, there you go. There we go. Well, technically it'd be coins, wouldn't it? Because we don't have 100 yen. Ah, my head! <laughs> Help! So there you have it, guys. I hope you find this video useful. Pete and I do this every single week on the Abroad in Japan podcast, a weekly show with 100,000 listeners, the biggest podcast about Japan available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, literally everything else. We are here to help you get the most out of your trip. We cover everything from travel advice, uh, tips on living and working in Japan, contemporary news topics like the Bears and Kim Kardashian. Unfortunately, not together yet. You can find the links below or just by searching Abroad in Japan on your favourite podcast. App. For now, no matter where you might be, out there in the big wide world, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm off to Daiso to buy things with amusing English that I don't really need. It's what, it's what Daiso's for, isn't it?